Re-reviews, Dead Island. Pre-review. Aw, oh, man, people were so excited about Dead Island. I mean, remember that announcement trailer? It, it, the girl, and she came out of the window, and there's, like, it was all in reverse, and you saw what happened, and, oh, wow, yeah, that was good times. There was a lot of hype about this game, mostly because of that announcement trailer and the idea of, you know, having, like, a zombie RPG action-y game set on this tropical island. Seemed like a pretty good idea at the time, but I have to tell you that in terms of my personal excitement, I was really in a take-it-or-leave-it mode. I, I didn't care that much if I got to play it anytime soon, but, you know, if I happened to get my hands on it, that would be fine, so in the lead-up to seeing this game, I would have said that my pre-review was probably like a 4 out of 10. Review so, I said that I didn't have high hopes for this game going in, and ultimately, I didn't have any high hopes going out, either. The whole thing starts pretty promising. I mean, you're in a hotel, uh, zombies are after you, a voice on the other end of the radio is leading you through these moments, like in the elevator that's collapsing, uh, that feel very cinematic. You're running away because you don't really have a way to defend yourself. Everything feels like it has a lot of potential, and when you get further into the game, there's some other things to be lauded about it, like the idea of a crafting system, where you can upgrade different basic melee weapons, you know, put nails into a bat, for instance, or electrify your machete. Neat ideas in concept, and the landscape's really cool, you don't usually get to see this kind of story done on an island, a tropical setting in general, is something fairly uncommon in games. And it lets you play as four different character classes up at the front, so there is theoretically some replayability. Of course, then we get into the reality of the situation, which is that even though you have those four character classes, really, if you're not taking the blunt weapon specialist, Sam, you're already at a disadvantage, and when I played originally, I made the big mistake of taking the firearm specialist. For the record, you don't even get firearms until the second act of the game, and once you do, they become pretty much useless outside of a few specific encounters. Also adding to the reality of this situation is that there are needlessly complicated parts to this that don't need to be in it. Like, for instance, bashing in a door, which takes a quick time sequence of precise button pressing so that you can get through that door efficiently. At the end of the day, this is supposed to ramp up tension, but what it ends up doing is just slowing down the gameplay. Not particularly fun. And you know how it's a really neat idea that you can mod out your weapons and everything like that? Well, it's cool, except that your weapons also degrade super fast, so that you have to constantly go back and repair them. And if we're looking at the actual lore here, I don't really understand why I go to my workbench and the thing I need in order to upgrade or mod out my weapons is cash. Why, why do I need to use cash? I'm at a workbench. The workbench doesn't require currency. I know it's a small thing, but I never really understood why you constantly accrue money in this game. It feels like there should have been some other kind of currency for a survival setting that would make more sense. But let's face it, that is not the biggest problem here. One of the biggest problems I actually have with the game is the leveling system. Zombies level up with you. Basically, as soon as you become level 3, zombies automatically somehow become level 3. And one, I don't like systems where the enemies grow in strength as you grow in strength. I like systems where the world is just as dangerous as it always was going to be, and you start to grow in ability as the game progresses. This does not do that, and I find it even stranger with this concept that zombies, of all things, zombies are going to gain levels. That just never made sense to me. They're better at being zombies now. They're, they're more zombie. They're, they're better zombies. It doesn't register for me at all. The different enemy types that you come up against are 
not particularly varied. They do come at a pretty good click, but they're not really outside of the realm of things that you saw already in, like, Left 4 Dead. You got the big bruiser guy that comes and punches you down to the ground because it got meat hooks, and there's the explodey one, and there's the one that constantly rams into you, and then there's the basic ones that uh, shamble towards you, and ones that run real fast, you know. It is your common slate of zombie archetypes. For me personally, the moment where I kind of gave up on this game was I was trying. I was really trying, and I had built all of these weapons and customized them all out, and I went to this gas station, and you're supposed to drop in through the ceiling and deal with this brute, this thug. And there's this whole system where you can throw your weapons so that you can do things at a distance. And I throw all my weapons, and then he kills me. And there really is no such thing as death in this game, which is also kind of odd for a zombie title, but it just takes you to a checkpoint outside of that skirmish. The problem is, is that when you go back in, as I did, you find that all of those weapons that you spent so much time customizing and upgrading are just gone. They're just gone altogether. And you can still complete the quest and everything, but you start to wonder what the purpose of this whole idea is. I think thrown weapons in this game are basically useless. Why would I think to throw away all these weapons after I spend so much time customizing them? It doesn't really make much sense. There's also stuff where zombies will all of a sudden just respawn in an area after you walk away for a few minutes, and I was surprised at how you didn't have much maneuverability in the game. There is no vaulting in this system, there's no verticality really, it, it is actually kind of hard to do any kind of parkour in this game, it doesn't focus on it at all. The biggest issue with combat is you start to realize that getting into a car and just driving over the zombies is the most effective way to actually kill them, and outside of that you could also try doing, well, this thing where you just kick zombies to the ground and then just try to wail on them once they're down. Oh yeah, there's also a stamina system for this whole thing, and uh, yeah, once you run out of stamina, you're very ineffective at doing almost anything in the game. I'd love to tell you about the very rich storytelling and voice acting, but I can't. I love you, and this is how I want you to remember me. You promised me you'll take care of her. She'll come with us. Dad, no! Dad! Go on now, and don't you lose hope. Live your life. It feels like the people that were doing the voice acting here were trying very hard to make it feel like a B-movie because the whole game kind of has that atmosphere to it. But this is like below B-movie. <laughs> this is something completely different, and I couldn't engage with it. I just frankly did not enjoy my time playing Dead Island, and I was actually kind of saddened by the fact that my impressions before playing the game were pretty much warranted after the fact. And yeah, on review, I would have still given this a 4 out of 10. Re-review. This is actually the kind of game that I really wanted to do re-reviews for, because, frankly, I wanted to give some games that I did not like a chance to redeem themselves. So I got a chance to look at the Definitive Edition to see what had been done with the game afterward, and I can't say that it was all that much. There is a piece of DLC uh, where you play, I think it's Jack Ryder, although I have to say, I did not play that part. You can only access it after you've played through the main storyline, and in case you're not getting the general tone of this re-review, uh, yeah, I, d I did not make it through the entirety of this game. One thing I did notice that was not prevalent the first time I went through, but maybe just because I've played so many more games since this, is the floatiness of your movement, which was something I didn't notice the first time through. But what I mean is that if you move to the right, for instance, and then you decide I'm going to go to the left, most games will simply 
just lets you start going to the left. But this game believes in giving you inertia, so that if you start moving into the left, you're, you're actually just slowing down to the right before you can go to the left. And it just makes the whole thing feel like your character is a boat that you're trying to steer around. I did try to do one thing better and used the uh, sharp weapon specialist Jian instead of Perna this time through, but even then I realized that your sharp weapons don't really come into play until at least like an hour or two into the game, and then they're very infrequent, and also they have less durability than your regular batons and boat oars, etc., so you constantly have to repair them. And frankly, this whole thing would have been a complete wash for me. It, it really could have been a complete wash. But then, I noticed that there was something else that they added to Definitive Edition. And somehow, it did redeem the game a little bit, in my eyes. And that is something called One Punch Mode. Now let me get this right out of the way. One Punch Mode is purposefully broken. What it allows you to do is play through the game where your fists, just your unarmed attacks with no weapon equipped, are incredibly fast, use absolutely no stamina, and have incredible force behind them. Moreover, they have elemental abilities, so you can actually set zombies on fire and electrify them as you are punching them furiously like the Tasmanian Devil, and it's pretty great. But oh, it gets better, because you know that kick move that's usually spammed? Because they realize that your kick never has to be repaired. Well, now, basically One Punch Mode turns your kick into, uh, there's a zombie, and the zombie is a football. The island is the goalpost. Kick the zombie right over the horizon. Kick it into a mountain. Enjoy. And this just makes the whole thing way more entertaining. In some ways, though, it shows the problems with the main game, because I ended up playing that mode a whole lot more than the regular way you're supposed to play. And if you think about it, when your punches and kicks are so ultimately powerful as they are in that mode, you realize the flaws with the main game. I don't have to pick up weapons because there isn't a weapon better than my fists. If I don't have to pick up weapons, I also have no reason to pick up any kind of materials that would allow me to upgrade my weapons. I also don't have to pick up money that I would only be using to upgrade my weapons in the first place, or buy new weapons from vendors. I don't need to do any of that, so literally there's no reason for me to pick anything up at all. One Punch Mode is the most enjoyable way to play this game, by far. But it also highlights the fact that there are a lot of flaws in how the game is structured, because when your fists become so ultimately powerful that you can just punch people off of railings, etc., you realize that you don't have to engage with the majority of the other systems that they've built. It is all about weapon maintenance and improvement, and without that, most of the way the game is structured is pretty superficial. But Dead Island has a bigger problem, one that comes in the form of another zombie game, also by Techland, Dying Light. And let me make this very clear. You might think that if I had this much of a problem with Techland zombie series, Dead Island, I would also have a problem with their other zombie series, but nothing could be further from the truth because Dying Light was great. It really had some interesting mechanics with the day-night cycle and the, the different ways that you would address issues depending on what time of day it was. Mercenaries are all over the place and the environment actually interacts with itself. A lot of the problems that were associated with Dead Island are not there in Dying Light. Like, I can actually parkour around the place, in fact they encourage you to. Um, zombies are not really leveling up with you, you're getting better, but the zombies are still, well, zombies, obviously. It's just that some of them are much more powerful, and you might want to avoid them. Guns are not just locked off until Act 2. They're available very early on, but it becomes 
obvious that the reason why you might not want to use them is not because they're not available, but because they're going to make a lot of noise and that's going to attract zombies. So even though you have a gun in your hand, you may not want to use it from a strategic standpoint. There's so much that Dying Light fixed about the formula that they made with Dead Island. And unfortunately, I really feel like it gets second billing so often for Techland. Now, luckily, Dying Light 2 is going to be coming out eventually, and it's supposed to be their most ambitious project ever, and I'm really glad that they're putting more resources into that series that I think has far, far more potential. But as for Dead Island, it's either super silly or takes itself way too seriously, and both versions of that game are not particularly entertaining, and if it weren't for one punch mode, I probably would have written the whole thing off. But hey, you know what, they did include it, and I have to give them credit for it, and so you know what, I'm gonna do this for you, Techland, just for one punch mode alone, and the fun of just kicking zombies across an island. I am going to give you a re-review score of 5 out of 10. That's right, you finally get a little bit ahead of the game. I got to punch a zombie into a bar and watch its limbs fly off. That is worth something. So, kudos for that. So there you go, I'll give a little bit of a re-recap so everybody can uh, see the scores. Uh, they're not nearly as impressive as some of the other games we've done on this series. But you know what? That's fine. That's that's okay. They can't all be winners, folks. But I did want to apply this formula of going back and looking at games again to ones that I did not particularly enjoy the first time around. Because you never know. I could have looked back on this and realized that it was way better than I originally thought. It's not. But, you know, it, that could have happened. And that would have been interesting, too. Who knows? Maybe I'll uh, eventually go back and play something like Baroque. No, I'm not going to do that. Nice try, Nathan's head. Thank you for joining me on this episode, and look forward to the next re-review that might have something to do with Batman. Uh, so, not zombie-related. There's a change of pace. All right, you're and I'm this. looking for my teddy bear. Are you freaking I kidding me? I without him, and I'm very tired. Oh, and those too monsters bad. monsters keep knocking. Yeah, I d Will you find my teddy bear? Oh, God. <sighs> yeah. Yes. Why not? The last time I saw him, sure. he was in our bungalow. Zombies Number everywhere. 15, where I live with my sister, I'll go get Jenny. a damn teddy bear. Remember, his name is Teddy. Shocking. Tell him Annie sent you. And I'm sure he'll go with you. I'm not talking to a teddy bear anymore. He's a brave teddy bear. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs>